thank you for allowing us into your home once again. Thank you for the privilege you've done us to always come to you with the word of the Lord. Without you, our relevance is of no use. And so we are here. We are here because we love you. We are here because we love Christ. And we want you to tap and share the pages. Invite a friend. Tell a friend to join. Don't listen alone. As Pastor Esther intimated, one of the ways you can help us is to share the links. Let others, you know, also know that something is going on. You share the pages, share the links. We are on YouTube, we are on Facebook. We are interactive on all social media platforms, Periscope, LinkedIn, Instagram. You can get us on all Twitter. You can get us on all the platforms. The Lord which will bless you. I, I believe that those of us in Africa and some other part of the world, we go to church and we've had very powerful uh, service. But the Bible says that the glory of the latter shall be more than the former. And so I want you to begin to thank the Lord for even the privilege to come back from church and the privilege to hear the word of the Lord minister to you in the comfort of your home whenever you are watching us. The Lord richly bless you. Just open your mouth and begin to bless the name of the Lord. Just bless the name of the Lord. Father, we thank you for the privilege to come before you. The privilege to speak your word. The privilege to stand before your people. We pray for, thank you for the privilege to be a blessing even unto your people in the name of Jesus. We thank you for this Palm Sunday, um, a year that was last year by this time we were locked down. Last year by this time, people had died and people were dying of coronavirus. Some of us thought we were going to get the virus. People lost their job last year, this same time. A lot of things happened last year, and if you are alive and you are counted among the living, this evening you have every reason, this afternoon, wherever you are watching us from, you have every reason to give God worship. He deserves our worship, He deserves our praise. He deserves our praise. If I were you, I would stand up for my chair. If I were you, I would go on my knees. If I were you, I would lie prostrate. Because a year by this time, people were dying like chickens. People, things were happening. Companies were being closed down. People were, people were losing their jobs. Some of them, salaries were cut. But you and I, the Lord has preserved us. Some of us, we don't know how we're going to survive. But the Lord we have every reason to give him worship. We have every reason to celebrate Palm Sunday. We have every reason to say, Lord, we thank you. And so, join your faith with my faith. As we say, Lord, we thank you. Jesus, we appreciate you. We give you worship. We give you worship. We exalt your name, King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We exalt you. We exalt you. What shall we render unto you for your faithfulness, for your covering, for your protection towards us? We do not deserve it, but you have been faithful towards us, Lord. Take all the praise. Take all the glory and take all the adoration. But I know all those things. Thank you, Spirit of God. Thank you, Lord.
Somebody will hurt you 
so deep and yet Jesus will say forgive the person knows that what he has done is wrong but Jesus as a follower of Christ tells you forgive so difficult and so when Jesus said anyone who wants to follow me must take up the cross that is the cross that Jesus was talking about the cross of the pain you are going through the cross of the sickness that you have to endure. I know Christians who are don't speak in Bible believing. They believe God, yet they are sick and they are dying. They are dying of cancer slowly. And yet they believe that Jesus is going to heal them. I know people who have been out of job and yet they believe. They still believe that Jesus is going to heal them. Jesus is going to deliver them. And that is the cross that I'm talking about. Uh, so let me tell you, whether you are rich or poor, the rich still goes through challenges. The poor also goes through challenges. If you want to be a disciple of Jesus, he says, take up the cross. The cross is not easy. The cross is the pain of following Christ. The pain, the suffering, the ridicule, the, the, the shame of following him. Sometimes people will mock you. Yeah, they will say, where is your God? You, you say you love God, why are things delaying your life? That is your cross. Maybe you are a mother, you have a sick child. Maybe you are a father, you have a sick child. You are looking at me, you are watching me right now, you are so devastated. You are so down, heartbroken. Somebody broke your heart. Somebody disappointed you. Listen to me, child of God. Every time you are going through pain as a child of God, I want you to remember the pain that Jesus went through. The cross, the crucifixion. And that is why Jesus said, if anyone wants to follow me, he has to deny himself. Do you know what it means to deny yourself? It means that you deny yourself of every reputation. You have no reputation. You have no dignity. <laughs> you, have, uh, you have no dignity. Anybody at all can talk to you anyhow. Anybody at all can behave anyhow to you. And yet, you cannot reply because of Christ. But listen to me, Jesus, there is a reward for they that put their trust in the Lord. I'm telling you, child of God, there is a reward for they that put their trust in the Lord. Keep trusting the Lord. Keep believing in the Lord. Your faith in the Lord is not going to be wasted. In the midst of all you are going through, God is working it for your good. Go to 1 Corinthians 4, verse 16. 1 Corinthians 4, verse number 16. 1 Corinthians 4, 16. Let's read the word of the Lord. 1 Corinthians 4, verse number 16. Paul says, Wherefore I beseech you, ye followers of me, for this cause have I sent, 1 Corinthians 4 16. For this cause have I sent you, Tim Timotheus, who is my beloved son and a faithful in the Lord, who shall bring you into the remembrance of my ways, which be in Christ as I teach everywhere in every church. And, and, and Paul went further to say, now some of you are puffed up you are you are you are proud that's what it means puffed up as though i will not come to you or you are angry with me but i will come to you shortly if the lord will and, and will know not the speech of them which are puffed up by the power so paul is saying in the 16th that wherefore i beseech you be ye followers of me as I am a follower of Christ and so 
as a disciple of Christ, God expects us to be followers, to follow the path of Christ, to follow the ways of Christ. Now, in in in, in First Corinthians, go to First um, Corinthians eleven verse one. I'm going to read something there for you. First Corinthians eleven to support my point. It says, "Be ye followers of me." As I also follow Christ. So Paul is saying, don't just follow me blindly. If you want to be a disciple, don't just be a disciple of Pastor Chris or the disciple of Apostle Chris. But follow Apostle Chris so long as Apostle Chris is following Christ. Some of you you follow your pastors blindly, even when they don't follow Christ. Even when their doctrines does not follow Christ, you follow them blindly. But Paul is saying, follow me as I also follow Christ. So Christ is the standard. The Bible said, looking unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. So we look to him, we follow him because his ways are perfect. And so Paul is saying, follow me as I also follow Christ. And so ladies and gentlemen, when we talk about discipleship, one of the things I want to learn today is that discipleship does it come cheap. Listen to me carefully. Discipleship does not come cheap. Discipleship comes with a cost. Today, for instance, I, I pitied uh, Pastor Esther. I saw she was coming down from the staircase to come and do something for me to take to the office. And she didn't know that I had already woke up praying, you know, in the hall. And I could sense the way she was climbing the stairs coming down. You could see that she wished she was sleeping back. <laughs> You see, there is a cost of discipleship. Sometimes I will have to finish meetings around one day and for her to send me. There's a cost of discipleship. Somebody touched their Mercedes, you may be jealous and say, Oh, I went the sister sent me the love for somebody to die to, to, to bless her with the Mercedes. Because there is a price to pay for everything. She's paying the price. And so, if she's getting the benefit, don't be jealous. There's a price for everything. And so, when we talk about discipleship, there is a cost for discipleship. It's not easy to be a disciple of Christ. And I'm going to prove to you from the word of the Lord. Now, go with me to Luke chapter 14. I'll prove to you, I'll prove to you that it's not easy to be a disciple of Christ than what people tell you. You know, I, I, I have preached those sermons before when I was a young preacher. And when we were trying to win souls, we would tell people, we'll come into Christ, when you come into Christ, everything is going to be okay, everything is going to be fine. You know, we deceive a lot of people. And they came to Christ, and when they had those and the challenges started, because we gave them false hope. We told them that when you come to Christ, everything is going to be okay. In Christ to be a disciple. If you really want to be a disciple of Christ, in Christ it's not going to be easy. But you see, in Christ the yoke is easy. <laughs> when you, you 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 will go through the fire, you will go through the storm. But you see, the difference between a disciple, a Christian. And an unbeliever or somebody who is not a believer is that the believer has an assurance even though he's going through the same storm. And the assurance is that when you go through the storm, he's there with you. When you go through the fire, he's there with you. When you go through the waters, he's there with you. That is the difference between the believer and the unbeliever. When the unbeliever goes through the same thing that the believer is going through, he commits suicide. He kills himself. But when a believer goes through, he has an assurance of the 
Holy Spirit. He has an assurance of God sending angels to minister to him or her in the midst of that challenge, in the midst of that problem. And that is the difference between a believer and a non-believer. And so anybody that tells you that following Christ is easy, the person has deceived you. Following Christ, being a disciple of Christ is costly. Because let me tell you, Jesus himself faced betrayal. He faced denial. People betrayed him. And so your story will not be different. People are going to betray you. People are going to deny you. People, you see, Jesus went through suffering. In, in, in the period of Easter, I'm going to be teaching all that. Jesus went through suffering. He went through death, persecution. Listen to me. But you see, the assurance we have is that we don't serve a dead God. But in the midst of all that Jesus went through, he resurrected on the third day. Oh, Shandalaba. I, I, I know by now you are rejoicing, you are so excited. Because, listen to me, that in no matter whatever you are going through right now, my darling, no matter the persecution, no matter the denial, no matter the, the suffering you are going through, if Jesus rose and if death could not hold him in the grave and he died and resurrected on the third day, I want to tell you that you are coming out of that tomb. You are coming out of every situation that sorrow may endure for the night, but joy is coming in the morning. If Jesus did not remain in the tomb, it means that your problem is not going to be permanent. If that sickness is not going to be permanent. That disappointment is not going to be permanent. That betrayal is not going to be permanent. That thing that is killing you, that thing that is suppressing you and, and depressing you is not going to be permanent. The reason why it's not going to be permanent that Jesus, who you are following, Jesus, who we are following, did not remain in the tomb. But the Bible said he died, but on the third day he resurrected. And he says, I am the resurrection and the life. So anything that is dead in your life in this period of Easter is coming alive in the name of Jesus Christ. Listen to me. That dream of yours is coming alive. That marriage of yours is coming alive. Dry bones are going to live again because Jesus did not remain in the tomb in the midst of all the betrayal. In the midst of all that he went through, yet he resurrected. Let me tell you something, child of God. It is not easy to follow Christ. It is costly to follow him. Now, look for him. I'm going to read Luke 14 for you. Verse 25. You can protect it for them. I'm reading 14, verse 25. I read the word of the Lord. This, this is where the disciples of Jesus were tested. When you were a disciple of Christ, you will go through a lot of tests. You see, a true disciple goes through tests. A true disciple will always go through tests. That is why the Christian journey has been a journey that some of you say, Pastor, I have cried, oh, I have wept, oh. Because you know why? The Christian journey is a journey of so many tests. Because without a test, there is no testimony. Without a test we are going through, there is no testimony, my darling. Yes, I know you are going through some tests. You just receive a doctor's report. The doctor says that things are bad. You are going to die. I know you are going through a test. You have just been fired at your work. I know you don't have a mother. You don't have a father. All of them are dead and they've left you. I know a woman just broke your heart. A lady just broke your heart. A man just broke your heart. Upon all the good you did for them. You did good to people and they pay you back with evil. It is part of the test. It is part of the betrayal. Your master went through it. The one you are following went through it. Do you know how many times I felt like giving up? Because of betrayal of men. There were times I felt that it is over. Then I realized that it is part of the test. Because without the test, there is no testimony. Sometimes God will take you to the test so that he can give you the testimony. 
That's what David said. When I am tried and I'm tested in the fire, I shall come out as pure gold. When they give you gold in a raw state, you may not appreciate it. But wait until the gold goes through the fire. And the gold comes out and you look at it at a raw state and it finished state. And you are like, oh, I couldn't appreciate the gold when it was in raw state. Some of you, the fire you are going through is preparing you for your next level. The test you are going through is preparing you for the next level. Whatever you are going through is preparing you for the next level. Somebody said they thought they were burying us, but they did not know that we were seeds, that they are buried for us to germinate. Ah, listen to, listen to me, child of God. The Bible said, if the kings of this world had known, they wouldn't have crucified the king of glory. If they had known that by crucifying Jesus, he was going to be seated at the right hand of God the Father, they wouldn't have crucified him. If only they knew that the crucifixion was going to bring 10 billion and 10 trillions of Christians worshiping him on Palm Sunday and, and Good Friday and Sunday resurrection, they wouldn't have done that. If they knew that Jesus, by crucifying Jesus, he was going to be seated at the right hand of God the Father in the city for you, and a big mistake. John of God, let me tell you, whoever is tormenting your life, whoever is frustrating your life, the person is making a big mistake. Because the person is preparing you for the next level. The person is preparing you for a takeoff. For a takeoff. Listen to the child of God. So long as you are a disciple of Christ, you will be tested. You will go through some tests. I'm telling you. My heart has been broken several times. I don't have a heart anymore. Sometimes I feel I don't have a heart. Because for a long time I can't feel my heart anymore. I can't feel it. And many of you, your story is like that. You've gone through so much disappointment, you have been bombarded with disappointment on every side. Your friends have given up on you. Your friends have betrayed you. Your family have betrayed you. Your family has given up on you. People you trusted have betrayed your trust. And sometimes you are there and you feel to, you feel like ending it all. Some of you, it's like you have to start life all over again. And you cannot stand the shame of starting all over. But hear the word of the Lord. The Lord is saying that that test it is part of the programming of God. The Bible said, for God worketh all things together for them that love him. For the good of them that love him, that are called according to his purpose. And so, whatever trial you are going through, whatever test you are going through, is part of the purposes of God for your life. I'm telling you, I read one teenager's books. I read one of his books, The Elephant. And he was talking about how people, when people, anybody that comes into your life, whether the person brought something wickedness into your life, or the person betrayed you, or the person was good to you, that person was part of the learning process. Any point that comes into your life is a learning curve. Whether they betrayed you, whether they, you trusted them and they betrayed you, whether they were good to you, they were part of the test. They were part of the learning process. They were part of it. And God orchestrates it. He allows you to go through it because he's preparing you for something greater. Then listen to the child of God. Wake up from that bed and stop crying. You've worked for too long. And tell yourself, my soul arise from this slumber. Rejoice. No, no, I mean, that was why David, David got to a point where it was too much for him to bear. And he said, my enemies, rejoice not over me. For when I fall seven times, I will rise up seven times. Tell yourself, I will rise up again. My hair will grow again. I will lift up my head once again. So if you have been through so many battles, you cannot even lift up your head. But listen to me and hear the word of the Lord. Your head is about to grow again. You are about to be lifted again. God is about to promote you again. God is about to lift your head again. Listen to me, child of God. Don't give up. Being a disciple is part of the training. The test is part of it. 
And the Bible said they were tested. And they were, and, and, and they went great multitude. I'm reading. And they went great multitude with him. And he turned and said unto them, If any man come to me and hate not his father and his mother or wife or children and brethren, sisters, yea, and his own life, also he cannot be my disciple. And whosoever doeth not bear his cross. So Jesus is saying that one of the first qualifications, <laughs> can you imagine, one of the first qualifications Jesus gives to be his disciples is that if you want to follow me, you have to hate your family. Now, what he's saying is not literally saying hate them, because the same Jesus in the scriptures tells us when you hate his kid. He's actually talking about attachment. There are some of you, your father is your God, your mother is your God, your wife is your God, your husband is your God, your children are your God, your sisters and your siblings are your God. Anything cannot come above your wife, cannot come above your father, your mother, your sisters, your family. There are some of you, if there is a funeral on Sunday, you will choose to go to the funeral than to come to church. If your sister is doing an outdooring, you will choose to go to the outdooring than coming to church and serving the Lord and play your role. And that is the attachment Jesus was talking about. Jesus is saying that if you want to follow me, all those attachments, my work must come as a priority. My name must come as a priority. Above every other thing. Some of you, you will choose your family over the kingdom. You will choose your family over the work of God. You see how your families they have betrayed you upon all the good you have done for them. Because you see, the work of God has in lie. Some of you, when you stand up, my family, my family, my family, and you leave the work of God. Some of you were committed to the things of God until you got married. You were committed and you love God until you got married. And you change everything my husband, everything my wife. Love the Lord with your heart. Because every other thing will fail you, your husband will fail you. Can you be divorced? I'm telling you. I've seen two people love themselves. After a while, they, they, they got tired of themselves. Everybody went to the But the love of God does not fail. So rather put your trust in God rather than that girlfriend or boyfriend for which reason you are so busy. People can spend time on phone with their girlfriends, their fiancé, but when it comes to midweek service, they will not be in church. Friday service, they will not be in church. Sunday, they will not be in church. And yet they will give excuse that they don't have time because of their work. And yet you spend time with your family, you spend time with your fiancé, or your girlfriend, or your husband, or wife. And Jesus is saying, if you want to be my disciple, you need to hate all these people around you. You must detach from them. Detach yourself from them. Detach yourself from them. Some of you, you, you are too much attached, so you can't do the work of God. Oh, everything, this week I'm going for funeral. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, this is my sister here, my brother there, my uncle there, my mother there, my sister there. Can your mother take you to heaven? Can your father take you to heaven? Can your sister take you to heaven? Can your wife even take you to heaven? Some of you, because of one stupid girl with some fianca face and fianca bottles, you said you have left church because she has broken your heart. Stupidity in the highest. So people, they, when they propose to a girl and the girl says no, and the girl is in the church, they will leave the church. Stupidity in the highest level. Jesus must be your ultimate. If you are going to church, let me know because you're a girl. Yeah, let me tell that girl that bounce, God can give you 10 times better than her. That boy that bounce you, that makes you think that you're not going to church again, God can give you 10 times better than that boy. I'm telling you, I've seen people, God has given their fathers more than their own biological fathers. I've seen people, God has given them mothers better than their biological mothers. I've seen people, God has given them sisters in the kingdom better than their own sisters and brothers. 
And so those of you are so attached. You cannot be a disciple of Christ if you are too attached to some of these things. Because those people, they, they cannot take it to heaven. They cannot take it to heaven. I'm not saying you should neglect them. But I'm saying that place God as a priority this year. Let God be your priority. So of you, everything my mother, everything my mother, everything my mother. Everything my father. I see your father died for you. Let me tell you a story, but don't laugh. My father and I were in a place. Eh? That's why I knew that your father cannot die for you. He and I was in a place. And that time where we were, I'm not going to mention the place. There was war in that country. And they, threw, they were shooting and they threw guns. You know what my father did? He forgot me that I was even eight years. He jumped first into the under the bed before he even remembered that he had a son and told me to come. So your father will not even die for you. <laughs> Be here. And everything, my father, my mother. So even when we want money to build the church, build the church, oh my father, I'm sending them money, my family, I'm sending them money. You see how they are talking your money? They cannot take their account for it. And some of you, you don't have any memorial when it comes to God. No memorial. You have not done anything for God. All you think about is you, your children, your family alone. May the Lord have mercy on us. Jesus gave us the first criteria. He says, if anybody wants to follow me and want to be my disciples, he must. Hate not his mother, father, mother, and children and brethren, his own life also. And hate not his father and mother, and even his own life. Some of you, so you see the second criteria, it's still in the first point. He said, after this family people, you yourself, your life. Some of you, eh, your life, you, you like too much life. Hey! Your Brazilian hair. Some of you, eh, oh, Jesus Christ. Let me tell you something. Some of you, you are sick. Especially some of the ladies, you are sick. You know why you are sick? Huh? Some of you don't even have a Bible. If not, you don't even have a Bible you use. You claim you have it on your phone. You don't even read it. Or you don't even have a physical Bible. And yet, the cream you use is 500 naira. You are sick. The cream you are using and, and you see there is stupidity going on. They said men like big bottles. So now every lady, even including some stupid gospel musicians, go and do their bottles, sculpt their bottles, make their bottles big. Will bottles bring money into the pocket of a man? If I'm going to marry you, will your bottles bring me money to my pocket? And so people are sculpting their bottles. People are buying creams to the tune of 500,000 grams and other things and they, they are bleaching to be fair. And one time I was watching a, 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 a man who sued the wife. He sued the wife. The, the lady had bleached. She had bleached everywhere. Everywhere. She bleached everywhere. So when the man, the man thought he was marrying a Godoboy woman. White men in fair Caucasian. So when the time came out, the time was something wrong. Everywhere the time was black. So the man said, ah, how about now? Me, I am not fair. You, you are so fair, so the time should be fair. When they went and took the woman's old picture, she is to do black. Who has upgraded herself? Because he didn't like the pigment and God had given it to her and had bleached her entire body. Like Michael Jackson. Who are you deceiving? Huh? Beauty is in the eyes of the beholder. Somebody can be black and yet that is the guy. That is the one that billionaire wants. So you are bleaching yourself for nothing. And some of you are giving yourself cancer, you are sick. There are people who call me and say, Pastor, I am not eating from morning to evening. 
and yet they are using iPhone 12. You are sick. You have a problem. You have a mental case. In fact, you are mentally derailed. You need help. You need psychological attention. You need psychological attention. Some of you don't care about your life. You care too much about your life. And Jesus said, you cannot follow me if you care about your life. Let's go for evangelism. Ah, people will will laugh at me. Hey, evangelism, no. They will laugh at me. I don't want people in my office to know that they're Christian and come as a man. May the Lord have mercy on you. You're too particular about your life. When you don't do your name, say, hey, something's doing you. President, hey, if you don't have a new clothes, you can't go to church. You are sick. You have a big problem. You care about the, the blessings of this world. Me, I can't be without a woman for more than three weeks old. I can't be with a woman. I be alone without a woman for more than two weeks. At least within two weeks I have to fire. You are sick. You are sick. You are single and you have to fire. You are sick. You, some of you care about the pleasures of this world. The pleasures of this world. You cannot be a follower of Christ and one leg is in the church and one leg is outside the church. There are even married women and married married women who would dress and is going out and ask say, Oh honey, this thing you are wearing is too expensive and she will get angry. Ah, I never have to tell me, oh this one that bed, what is wrong with it? A believer. Some of them might be pastors' wives. And they don't see anything wrong with what they are wearing. You are sick, you have a problem. You cannot be a follower of Christ. When you love the pleasure, you love the peace of this world. Jesus said, if you want to, anybody who should follow me must reject all these things. Reject it. Thank you. I, 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 I'm so fired up because I'll continue. We'll close like 10 minutes today. I want to end here. Maybe next week I'll continue. And whosoever. Love his life, owns his life. So people say, It's my own life. And they, I was in Virginia, sat two married couples down. We tried to cancel them. Do you know what the lady told her? I said, It's my body, it's my pussy. I, I decided who screws it, the chief. When the Bible says, Your body is the temple of the most high God, I tell you, That's your body. And Jesus said, whoever owns his body will lose it. He owns his life will lose it. Because so long as you own your own life, you will lose it. But when you hand over your life to him, your life is preserved. And when you hand over your life to him, you can't live any kind of life. Because you have handed it over to him. And when you hand it over to him, then you become a disciple. That's why I said, being a disciple of Christ doesn't come cheap. It comes with a price. And if you're not willing to pay that price, you cannot be a disciple of Christ. And Jesus said, whosoever does not bear his cross cannot come after me and cannot be my disciple. Now, I will, I will, I will continue this one, the 27 next week. What it means but I may use it during the convention. Whoever does not bear his cross, the cross of Christ, the cross, the cross. May the Lord help us to bear his cross. I will, I will continue from there next week. Thank you Holy Spirit. But I want us to stand upon these few things I've spoken about. Because in fact, the criteria that Jesus has given them is, is, too, is too enormous. 
It says, whosoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. This who is a the cross of Christ. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And I will, I will teach this one on Friday, right? I will teach it on Friday. Bearing his cross. Bearing his cross. Who is this Jesus? That we have to bear his cross. What does it mean to know Jesus and to bear his cross? I will teach it on Friday during the convention. In this convention, the few who can come to the first and second care service, the other people will never be the same. But the things I will be teaching, and by the time I'm done, we will zoom into praise, worship. This, this place will be on fire for the Lord. So people will jump out of this place and they want to be very reason. Wherever you are right now, I want you to begin to ask the Lord to teach you His way so you can be His disciple. Ask the Holy Spirit to direct you so you can be His disciple. Open your mouth and say that sincere prayer. Let it come from the sincerity of your heart. Let it come from the sincerity of your heart. Say, Lord, direct me. So I can be your disciple. I can serve you in humility. I can serve you in humility. I can serve you in humility. Lord, help me. Jesus, help us. Jesus, help us. Jesus, help us. Jesus, help us. To be your disciple, Lord. To bear your cross. And to walk with you till the very end. Till the very end, till the very end, till the very end, till the very end, Lord, till the very end, till the very end, till the very end. Jesus help us. Jesus help us. Jesus help us. Jesus help us. Jesus help us to the very end. To bear the cross to the end. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Help us. Anything in our lives that is not making us to differentiate ourselves as your disciples, Lord, help us. Teach us your ways. May we come back to the roots when we miss it as people and we miss it as a church. Bring us back to our first love. Bring us back to our first fire for you.